What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Lee and I'm a DIY electric skateboard builder. If you haven't been following on with this mini series, we're converting Scott's lithium polymer tramper into a lithium iron range beast. Now in the last video, you saw me preparing a battery for the enclosure, just finishing it off really. Haven't done too much uh, video stuff around the battery, but uh, it's here. Let me show you. Oh, this is it. <laughs> it's an absolute monster. Um, yeah, we managed to get the battery cover printed, the lower part, the middle part, and we slotted the battery into that with a TPU gasket on the bottom, which looks pretty cool, and will also keep the rain out a little bit. And well, now we're left with this absolute beast. I mean, look at this. Um, Xena, that's what Scott calls his board. And there's a little slot here, which I'm gonna put my logo in. But other than that, it's pretty much ready to go with the BMS and everything all in there. Um, and today we are working on the VESC enclosure. Now this is my design, I uh, designed it from scratch and actually it isn't the first design. The bit you guys don't see is the actual numerous prototypes that you go through when you are designing, got screws everywhere here, when you're designing one of these enclosures because you know it's not for me, it's for somebody else, so I want it to be right. So there are all the prototypes that we went through. So guys, let me show you uh, what I've come up with. Um, this is the VESC enclosure. It's got quite a few cool features I'm quite happy with. There's a cable entry here for the uh, phase wires, which I've just chopped off short because they were, don't forget, they were like all the way along here into the monster box. So there's a cable entry for the phase wires and the sensor wires. And also that's wide enough to allow the sensor uh, connector to pass through. There's a cable entry this side for the wiring to come along here and in. There's also, um, if I move this stuff out of the way, there's also holes to allow the access to the bolts so they don't interfere with the truck bolts at all. And then the two holes here bolt into the elastomer dampers there so that's how it secures in also it has these cool standoffs if you like and the vest basically clicks into these here and will be held on with the lid now i don't know if i'm going to be able to do this one-handed but essentially the vests just click in there and then the lid which will bolt to these six bolts also bolts to these as well and as holes and will allow the heat sinks from the vests to interact with the outside air so there'll be heat exchange and therefore these will run a lot cooler so there's space for two of those um, i already shortened these phase wires and put the connectors on that i rescued when i chopped them off in the past from the monster box um, here so and i've shortened the phase wires on this vest and i have another vest here to do and once we've shortened these and put the connectors on here, we'll be able to install the vests in there with the power. And then all that's left is printing the cover for this, put the box on, print the lid for the box, and we're done. Now all of that stuff, guys, is the perfect world scenario. Um, I think it's achievable in this week, really. I'd ideally like to get this board to Scott next week, so... We've got to crack on with it. And also I have some other stuff in here to do as well. Other boards that have come in paid work. So I've got to uh, crack on with that. So yeah, I'm going to get this done today. Vest enclosure wired and then on to just printing the last few things. So let's do it.
There we go, that is going nowhere. And then the basic concept for this is that the sensor wires come through and they go into that gap. There's like a little, little gap there. Sensor wires go in there and then these Go through there. Same with this one. There we go. Now the vasks. Load the sensor wires in. Now I need some heat shrink. So there we go, they're heat shrunk. Or they will be in a minute. I'm just gonna get the old fire on it. Right, they can't short anymore. Time to do the same for this side, and I'll come back to you in a sec. Right guys, uh, rescuing from the old monster box. This is the can cable. And all that does is go between here and here. That's just gonna connect them up so that the master can speak to the slave and send it commands, so that's that. And then in here, I don't know if you remember this from my video, still got it, the receiver and the dongle are in here. So we need to just take this apart quickly. Everything at Tramper is put together so well. There's no way that was coming apart. Right guys, so that's Scott's PPM receiver right there. And this is the dongle. And here's the dongle cable, all rescued from the monster box. That's all gonna go in here. We have to pick one of these vests to be master. Really doesn't matter. I'm just gonna pick this one. That's gonna have the dongle in it. And also, it's going to have the PPM receiver in it. But this case was designed so that these wires could stay in and they wouldn't get in the way. So they slot in to there. Now you see guys, it's closer together here than, it, than they are there. And that's because there's no clip for this top right and they will be, the lid will hold those apart when that's done. Right, so now we just need to heat insert some inserts. Right, I probably should have done this before I mounted the enclosure, but uh, we've got to insert these heat fit inserts into these holes and that'll just allow us to screw in uh, bolts in and out of this enclosure anytime Scott wants to get in here for anything. So they go in these holes. Now I do have a bit of a technique for it from when I was practicing. Basically try and get them as central as I can with the soldering iron on. It will start to deform the plastic. We just let it go in, let it slide in. There we go. Well, this is what it looks like now, guys. I hope you agree, it's looking pretty good. Next stage is to print the cover for the cables, put some grip on, print the green stuff, take it out for a test ride, and if all is well, put the bindings on, invite Scott over to come and try the board, see if he's happy with it. I hope you agree, it's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it so far. Just a few more bits to do now, guys, and I can get this one out the door and move on. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one when we do all of those things.